What's up guys, in today's video we are checking out something a little bit different, not just your standard Trek Marlin, but how you can turn any Trek Marlin into a gravel bike, and that doesn't even need to be a Trek Marlin. I'm gonna list off a few simple tips which will help transform any bike you have into a gravel bike, or faster commuter even, with these very subtle but noticeable changes. Especially with a market like this where there's a shortage of bikes, it shows what you can do with just one bike and make it such a multi-purposeful bike or narrow it down to be a bit more focused on one specific area. Gravel bikes are very popular right now but very hard to get. And some of the more entry-level mountain bikes are very popular right now and a little easier to get. So you might be able to combine these two factors, put them together, and end up with something which is a fast rolling gravel competitive bike. Let's check it out. All right, so the example bike we're gonna start with here, the base bike is a Trek Marlin 7. The Trek Marlin 7, if you don't know, is one of Trek's most popular bikes. A highly popular bike around everywhere, really. You can use it as a commuter. You could already use it as a gravel bike. It has mountain bike geometry and its ability to go anywhere with a good drivetrain, hydraulic disc brakes, and a reasonable front fork to it. Although another benefit of a bike like this is you're not spending too much money on a bike over buying for a very high-end part spec or a very high-end front suspension, for example, which would overvalue the build for where you're trying to aim, which is that gravel fast commuter style. This is something you're gonna be able to start with and build up into a fast gravel bike, which is gonna really keep its value without blowing the bank and making it worth you waiting the extra year to buy a $3,000 gravel bike. So the Trek Marlin 7 comes standard with a 29 inch wheel and most importantly, a tubeless ready rim. There has been a little bit of iffiness on that. When announced last year, the upgrades was a tubeless ready rim, but I see that has disappeared on the specs on Trek's website and that may be due to this parts issue, they've reduced it back to the standard rim. The one I've got with me is a tubeless ready rim. Instead of keeping those 29 by 2.2 inch wide tires, the first thing we're doing to make this a little bit faster is switch it out to a much faster, easier rolling 700C tire. 700C, 29, it's a complicated thing. When you're measuring bike tires, it's not about the rim, it's about the tires. So if you didn't know already, a 700C tire will indeed fit on a 29 inch rim. That is because a 29 inch rim does not even measure to 29 inches. Rim edge to rim edge, about 26 inches. So your mind might be blown now. That's right, a 29 inch wheel is not referencing the rim, it is actually referencing the tire outer diameter. And a good average on that, obviously with every bike tire, there's a little bit of give. You know, a Maxxis Minion 2.5 is gonna be a little higher volume than a entry-level Bontrager XR1 cross-country race style tire in a 2.0. Overall, it roughly equals 29 inches. What's most important is the rim is the exact same diameter as a road rim. The next difference between the rims is the width of the rim itself. So in regularly, a gravel rim or a road rim is very slim, around the 20 to 25 mil. It varies quite a lot, but that's the good average. With gravel bikes, though, we have been seeing more and more going to 25 and higher. This is now leaning towards where the mountain bikes start with the 25, 29, and now up to 32 mil wide rims. So this one comes with a nice wide rim, and what that's gonna do is when you pair it with a road or gravel specific tire, it gives you a nice wide fit to it, so it has a lot of volume and will add a lot of comfort to it. So same for the mountain bike tires, you want that volume and comfort, but too much is slow. And that's why we paired this one with the Pirellis, and it's gonna be a fantastic option. Obviously, when switching over to a road style tire or a gravel tire like the Pirelli Cinturato, Cinturato, I don't even know what it's called. So we chose this Pirelli Cinturato gravel tire for this. This one is their hard compound. It comes in two models, the hard and the soft. As we're doing a gravel bike and as we're already gonna get a wider volume from that rim, we don't need the soft. It would be very odd to put a soft tire on such a wide rim you're gonna end up with kind of the similar issue where it's gonna be very soft, tacky, and squishy, and you're gonna wear that down faster than necessary. Going with a gravel-specific hard compound, you're gonna be able to roll really fast. You already get the volume and space in it and softness from that rim width, so you have the best of both worlds. 
Obviously being a mountain bike originally, we have no issue with fitting up to a 45C tire. So it is quite the significant down from what it was, which would have been close to a 50, 52. It's not a perfect math because we're bouncing between inches, millimeters, centimeters, C. Why tires and bikes aren't the same, I have no idea. But this is a 45C width and we came from a 2.2 inch width. Thanks world. So switching that tire is gonna make it 10 times faster. It's gonna roll superbly, especially on the flats and really easy riding stuff. This is gonna roll with little to no resistance in comparison to what was on its stock. So the next big feature we're gonna change and to add a bit of comfort. So with every gravel bike, they come with low lung geometries. This keeps them low and stable and absorbs a lot of the big hits through the frame. You're rolling onto things instead of kind of bouncing them at the same time. To help with that in a geometry like a mountain bike, well one, we've already got the suspension, so that's gonna be nice. But two, we've switched out the seat post to a Cane Creek Thud Buster. If you've not seen one of these before, it's hard to show. Obviously, we've not put the seat on this one yet, but inside here is a rubber dowel, rubber dampener system, and this rocks back and forth. Obviously, it's really hard to show. It's made for a full-size human to sit on it, so this is a very hard piece of rubber. It hardly moves, but on impact, it makes for a massive difference in comfort, and that's gonna just make for that much better ride quality, especially because unlike mountain biking, you're potentially gonna be in your bike seat a lot more. You're gonna be sitting down, really putting the power out, and you'll be pedaling a lot harder than you've ever pedaled before, sat down, and that's where it's gonna add up. It's just gonna be a comfy seat. So with the Trek Marlin 7, you obviously get stuck with this mountain bike drivetrain. There is limitations to it, which it is made for accelerations, abilities on climbs, and overall quickness while going through trails. On gravel though, you may be open to big, vast open spaces. You may honestly just be pedaling forever and ever and run out of top end range. So the stock ring on the front of a Marlin 7 and most mountain bikes with a similar style of bike is gonna be a 28 or 30 tooth ring. Depending on what you're riding and depending on what bike you're transferring over, you can fit a bigger ring here. Now, it does depend on the spacing here, what size you can get. So this one is a 28 tooth and what we think max is fitting is a 32. So we're switching it out to that to get that top speed and high speed way faster. There's not much you can do on the rear end because we're already down to like an 11 tooth. So you can't really gain any more there. You won't miss it except for the crazy climbs. But even then, when gravel riding, you're going on graded roads which are designed for cars. It's very rare you're gonna have a near vertical climb like you would on mountain biking. So therefore you won't miss the extremely low ratio between the 28 and the like 42 or whatever you've got on the end. You won't miss that low gear not for gravel riding, not for commuting. You'll appreciate the top end speed a lot more because otherwise you will just max this one out. So the next thing to do when you're building up your gravel bike is figure out the handlebar positions and the handlebar setup. Overall, when you're imagining a gravel bike, the majority of them, but not all as we just saw with the Trek FX, are not straight bar. They're actually that drop down style. This gives you multiple hand positions in high, low, wide, everything is available for you. With a mountain bike though, you are stuck to this kind of straight bar without crazy modifications. We're trying to keep this budget, so we added a carbon fiber handlebar. Carbon fiber absorbs vibration significantly better than aluminum. You could also look for something like a steel bar, but they're very hard to come by, or a foam-filled aluminum bar, which is supposed to help. I know one of components has some like that, I don't know how much vibration they should absorb, but they should absorb a lot more than what a standard aluminum one has. So this is gonna add a lot more comfort. Just like the seat setup, you're gonna be in the saddle and in the handlebar position a lot more. It's not mountain biking where you're flowy all over the place. You're gonna be really holding on to this handlebar and you wanna make it comfortable. So long we go into a carbon fiber handlebar, which will make it comfy, another option is actually to switch out the grips to a more comfortable option. Right now we've put the Ergon GP1s on here, so it gives much more grip zone for your hand to hold on to, as well as a larger platform to cover more surface area of your hand. Instead of just having a 
essentially a piece of pipe resting here, putting a lot of pressure on it. It's gonna cover the whole hand and it's gonna spread and disperse your own body weight over the handlebar a lot better. So it's gonna add a lot more comfort. With those few little tweaks, we've already increased the efficiency of this bike tenfold. It's gonna be so much faster rolling, it's gonna be unbelievable. All right, so add in a clipless set of pedals like we have. We chose the Shimano XT pedal set. So it's gonna be using an SPD, which is a gravel slash mountain bike style cleat, metal, small, and able to put onto a shoe which has a lot of grip if you ever have to walk it, you're now gonna have a very fast bike. Overall, these are gonna be fairly low cost. We went kind of overboard here setting up tubeless, getting the carbon fiber handlebar, and that thud buster is not cheap, but there are many options similar to it with the suspension seat posts, the foam filled bars. There are some affordable carbon bars out there, and because you're not gonna be riding them hard like a mountain bike, anything that will absorb that vibration is gonna add up to be helpful. Overall, switching out tires, adding that seat post suspension, and making that hand position much more comfortable, you're gonna make big differences. Remembering to fix that gearing is a big thing you have to remember. If you forget to change that gearing, you will top out. You'll just max out. And if you're riding alone, it might not be too bad. If you ride with someone with a road or gravel bike, they're gonna very easily keep up or take over you very easily. But don't worry, overall, that's the quick way to build a gravel bike. Five little things, wheels, gearing, hand positions, seating, and pedals will make you a fast gravel bike out of a very entry-level mountain bike. Even potentially switching to a more entry-level one, the Trek Marlin 5, for example, with a wider range of gears on the front end may make for an even easier gravel experience. You will lose that tubeless compatibility though, but like I said, so many of the Marlin 7s aren't even coming tubeless, so it might not be that big of a deal. If you're looking for a gravel bike but can't get one, if you're looking for the new Trek FX but don't wanna wait eight months, you might be able to go down to your local bike store, add in a few hundred extra dollars, buy a bike and still have a good bike in the end, even if it becomes your daily commuter or reverted back to a entry level trail bike to be used on the side or resell when your real gravel bike comes in. This is hands down the easiest and quickest way to get a gravel bike right now is doing this. And it's gonna work, it's gonna be entertaining, and honestly, it's kinda cool to make your own thing and make it work. Gravel's a fun, relaxing thing to do. There's a little less seriousness in it compared to road biking, and that's the point. You can be out there on anything, and you can push yourself and just explore. So hopefully this helped, and I hope you liked it. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Tell me if you've tried any of these tricks or if you have any suggestions of your own. Otherwise, guys, thank you and good luck.